one week away from Christmas, but it's three up and three down, and we are starting right now. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. If this is your first time on this channel, we do a lot of comic and pop culture related videos. So please consider subscribing. But in this video, we're talking about three up and three down trends in the comic market community, starting with the three up portion. And we're going to get right into it right now. And the first one we're going to talk about is cameo appearances, Jack. Yeah, that's right. And I mean, if anybody has watched this channel, they know my feeling on cameos. I feel like the first time a character appears is the first appearance. But we're not talking about my opinion or really anyone's opinion at all. We were talking about what the market is bearing. And, you know, a few years ago, the cameo was looked at as so far worse than that first appearance. And whether or not people felt like, you know, Hulk 180 was the first appearance or Hulk 181, it didn't matter. Hulk 181 was dominant. But what we've seen over the last several years, and specifically with the last two years, is a trend of these cameos not necessarily catching up to the first appearances. And I'm not saying that Hulk 180 is going to catch Hulk 181. But the return that you're seeing if you would have bought into say hulk 180 amazing spider-man 299 um avengers 195 of course then we're talking about venom and taskmaster for the last two um you would start to see a larger return on your initial investment than you would see if you were holding those blue chip keys you know hulk 181 is a great book it's it's one of the cornerstones of our hobby same with amazing spider-man 300 but they've not, I don't want to say hit their plateau, um, but they've already been so established in the hobby. And these cameos are just constantly, every month it seems like they're going for more money and more money and more money as more and more new collectors come into the hobby. And then they're forced to make that decision, which book do they value or which book do they want? Or more importantly, which book is more accessible to them? And they overwhelmingly seem to be choosing those cameos. They're cheaper, they're easier to get. They let them get a piece of that kind of first appearance, even if they can't afford the whole thing. And with all of that, we're seeing these prices rise consistently. And that's why it's on the three up portion of this list. We can beat the dead horse and talk about our, our point of views from what a cameo and a first appearance is. Everyone knows that. But I think you make up a good, you bring up a good point there where from the market side of it, cameo first appearances, those first appearances, like you said, they're kind of getting out of people's reach. So those people are buying up the cameos. And with that, you're getting that own market trend where since those cameos are becoming more in demand, you're starting to see the price rise on them. And as you stated, if you do the market trend and look back at it, you'll see that a lot of those cameos over that time period, like you said, have, ri have risen in value. So it is a good investment on that point. Yeah, a lot of times often at a higher percentage rate than those first full appearances have. So the next one on the three up portion that we're going to talk about is witches. This is that image comic series from Jock and Scott Snyder. I think we're seeing some of this popularity from that new Scott Snyder Undiscovered Country book. But this is one is also a reader pick where I think this is more quantity of sales versus rising in value, at least from what I've looked at. Yeah, You're seeing a sure. lot of sales, especially in December. You're seeing 8 or $9 for that regular cover. There are some other variants out there. There were some con exclusives. When this book first came out, it did exactly what those con exclusives for Undiscovered Country did. People were all over that. Either way, fantastic story. I think some people that missed out on reading it before are starting to buy it up, and we're starting to see a lot of sales, especially this month. Well, I agree with everything you said, Brad. I think you left one part out, though, and that is the recent Bleeding Cool article, um, which hinted that Michael B. Jordan's production company is taking a look at witches for po a possible option. We talked about, which is when we talked about Undiscovered Country, we use it as a test case, almost as a cautionary tale yeah. to say to be careful with these books that get options so early. In 2014, which is was one of the hottest uh, books in the investment market because Plan B Productions, which is owned by Brad Pitt, went ahead and optioned that book. They had plans to really go large with it. And then Brad Pitt faced divorce and a few other things in his personal life, and we never saw this come to fruition like happens with a lot of options and it became one of those things where you and i use this as as really a test case to kind of tell people like you got to be careful with, with some of these option indies that get optioned almost too early that they haven't really developed enough story we don't really know what they're going to go it's based on hype and also we talked about kind of be careful 
when you see a celebrity attached to the option because they haven't in the past proven that they can bring this thing full circle. Now, you may say, well, we're talking Michael B. Jordan, but at least Michael B. Jordan was able to bring Raising Dion to the Netflix platform, saw that process to fruition, so possibly we could see something here. But either way, you hit the nail on the head. This isn't a high dollar pick. It's a volume pick. This was a book that had kind of fallen all the way down to cover price or below. And the biggest thing is really wasn't seeing any demand. There was literally no sales for a long time. Uh, you know, even graded nine eights were going for next to nothing. And now we're seeing consistent sales, like you mentioned in December, nine, $10. And I think that people are willing to jump on board at the chance that this may become something. So we'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Um, I think a lot of it really latches on to that Bleeding Cool article. And, you know, there's different mixed feelings about that publication in general. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, no doubt. It's selling. It's kind of hot right now. I would still caution people for it because there's only six issues out there. There's one volume and then there was a one shot. There's supposed to be a volume two. Don't know what's going on with that. But either way, it is a good read if you want a good story. But from people wanting to buy it up, thinking they're going to make a bunch of money on it, kind of walk the line with it. Yeah. Then the last one we're talking about for that three up portion is Spider Zero. Everyone knows Miles Morales number 13 came out last week and we got Miles' baby sister soon people are doing connect the dots and there's people are thinking that spider zero is miles morales's sister correct yeah i mean that's that's the feeling um and i i really think it could go either way uh we know that miles morales uh sister who first appears in the, that miles morales spider-man 13 um marvel's got big plans for her because they put out a press release which isn't something that they typically do with a first appearance so there's got to be some sort of plan in the future for her. Immediately, people in different communities started connecting dots. And uh, I heard from people from multiple communities that, you know, they believe that this was Spider-Zero. Spider-Zero was already a popular character. Spider-Zero is one of a multitude of characters who have appeared in this new volume of Spider-Verse. She first appears in Spider-Verse number one. Uh, all covers have seen an uptick, but the cover with her on the cover is, and the, one of the rarest covers is that uh, Walmart exclusive variant that comes with those Walmart packs. Tough nine eights to be found out of those because of the way that those are kind of wrapped in that package. But that has been the book kind of to get. That book has seen major increases. Not only has it seen increases in price, it's seen increases in demand. It is flying off eBay. Um, and so Red Hot, I, I, I will admit, I'm not saying it's, it is or isn't her, but I had this conversation with a customer at the convention that I was just at this weekend, set up as a vendor. I said, and it was an African-American customer. I said, you know, I, as, as a white guy, I am cautioned saying, well, this character looks like this character because we all remember the whole Naomi Action Comics variant cover saga. And I think that it's kind of a dangerous statement to make. And we don't want to go down the wrong road with that. But there seems to be people playing connected dots uh, trying to say that this could be this character. I think it makes sense. So we'll have to wait and see. And, uh, you know, this could either be a boom or bust type uh, kind of investment that people have made. But either way, I, you know, we've talked about this. I'm a big believer in these Spider-Verse characters. So I think even if this isn't Miles Morales' sister, Spider-Zero still has legs, no pun intended. So there's our three up portion, but real quick, before we get into that three down, we always take this time to highlight a comment or two from our previous video. And this week's comment comes from Gotham City Comics. He said Wonder Woman, Star Wars, and X-Men are up for him. And that Immortal Hulk, Marvel Event Books, and Aquaman are all down. This is kind of coincidental. We'll get into that in a minute. But these are all great picks, especially with that Marvel event book. Those Marvel event books to me usually seem, you know, very dry. Absol there are some outliers. Absolute Carnage, I think, was good. I actually enjoyed War of the Realms. A lot of people might not have, but a lot of those Marvel event books usually don't hold up. Right, even, even, Absolute Car are, even Absolute Carnage isn't right now. Absolute Carnage has started to kind of come down to earth from it, the highs it was seeing of a few weeks ago. People have moved on. So I think that I think this is an astute pick from a retailer. Yeah. So, yes. So, thanks, Gotham City Comics. And with that being said, we're going to move into the three down portion of the video.
starting with, just like Gotham City Comics had, we are talking Aquaman is on the downward trend. That's right. You're going to see me talk about a couple of the picks that we saw on Gotham City Comics list. And one, I already had pegged to be on this show. But one, I got to admit, came directly from them, and that's Aquaman. I hadn't even thought about that. And when I started looking into it, it is astounding what the Aquaman mega keys have fallen to. Whether we're talking about the first Mera, whether we're talking about the first Ocean Master, or the first Black Manta, all of these keys, which were just red hot leading into the Jason Momoa Aquaman movie, have fallen down to really attainable levels, especially in that mid to like, upper low grade level i think a lot of collectors who maybe wanted to add these books to their collection but felt like man i've been priced out now now is the time to pay attention to these books we know that there's going to be more aquaman movies with jason momoa but that gives you a great buying window so i'm actually kind of excited to talk about this also it's been weeks brian maybe maybe months i should say since we've talked about aquaman on anything as far as new comic book related like the bolo show so you know, whether we're talking new or we're talking back issues, Aquaman really is cold right now. Yeah, it seems like it didn't take long for those books to die down a little bit. There was some buzz right when they were talking about what is it, um, the trench and everything about what the sequel for Aquaman might be. Yeah. You saw a little bit of rise in some books then, but it never seems to hold up. Usually once the movie comes and goes, I, I actually enjoyed Aquaman. There's a lot of those DC movies that I don't like, but Aquaman was one of them that I actually did enjoy, especially compared to his Justice League character. But either way, you're seeing a lot of those trends. And if, if you don't have those in your collection, there's some of them I might even go out there and hunt for because there's some classic keys out there that you can be had for really cheap right now. And moderns, because you just mentioned the trench and there's supposed to be a trench horror movie coming from DC Comics. And that book is down to cover price, as well as the first appearance of the others, Aquaman sidekick. Then the next one we're talking about on the three down portion is Dylan Brock himself. Now, people may be like, what? Everybody talks about Dylan Brock all every week, it seems like, right? But that's the point. We've been talking about this character and who he's going to become for so long. This character has started to see a lull in sales. If you look at the past, like, say, two, three week sales, it is nothing like what you've been seeing over the past several months. Now, the first print of Venom number nine, which seems to be the clear winner in the like, what is the Dylan Brock first appearance? What is the go-to book to get? It's still selling for 20 to $25, but that is really stagnant from where it was. There's been no rise in value in that book. But the key what lands this book on the down portion of this list or this character is twofold. Number one, the volume. This, this is a character that went from selling dozens of books a day to one to two to three. And within a week, maybe 12 total, because you got to remember, you got a cameo with seven. You've got a first full appearance in nine. Uh, there's multitudes of variants as well as store exclusives for both books. We've seen the kind of like the secondary books, whether it's the Fantastic Four villains variant for number nine whether it's the battle lines variants for seven or nine, whether it's um, the second printings, all of these books have really dropped down in price. Seven, especially that cameo appearance has gotten cheap as can be. So we know Donnie's going somewhere with this. He's just taking his sweet time. My big suggestion would be to just pay attention to the market because every now and again, we're seeing an auction go off on ebay and it's going for nothing and that's what you want to be on the lookout for yeah especially if you find people that end auctions at inopportune times on ebay which you can find a lot of times middle of the day middle of the yeah. night then people when people aren't really watching and you can find good steals that way i don't know it's, a, it's like child actors man there's a, there's a there's a new child actor in town with with miles sister so maybe people's attentions on them and on her instead of dylan at the moment who knows? There's a new big one today in Doomsday Clock 12 with uh, this Dr. Manhattan, Clark Kent character. Yeah, let us know in the comments. Are you guys still fans? Are you buying up Dylan Brock books? What's your opinion on it? Either way, I mean, it's still a major character. Great character, but no doubt there's starting to be a downward trend for at this moment in time. Then the last one we're going to talk about is 
Immortal Hulk. We've given a lot of praise about this series on here. We've talked about how great those Alex Ross covers are, how great that storytelling is with Al Ewing. But within the past couple issues, especially the past issue, we started seeing decline. I, for one, I like reading comics. I like being entertained. It's my escape from my day-to-day, my normal job. I like reading books. And then whenever people start putting type of political or any type like that, I think that's why you're seeing a downward trend right now because a lot of people got upset that they claim that Al Ewing's last story started adding politics into a great story. I think there's that's a little bit of it. I also think there's all, and this is a lot of it is speculation driven. Um, and I don't mean speculations and speculation on comics, but I mean just us speculating on what the reasoning is for the the kind of decline in the latest storyline. Some of people have also brought up the fact that he's beginning Guardians of the Galaxy. Is his focus kind of diverted in that direction as he launches a brand new title? But really, I think this is the accumulation of a lot of things. What was the big back issue in this series? Well, it's that first appearance of Dr. Fry with Immortal Hulk number two. They're not really doing anything with that at this moment. Um, the green door isn't a prevalent thing at this very moment. Um, and I think that those kind of that horror element that made this series so successful isn't really an active part of this current story. So I think that they kind of got away from the entire kind of feeling and flavor of what was making Immortal Hulk successful. Also, this happens, Brian, with every good thing that happens with Marvel. You start getting a multitude of late printings. Now, we talk about late printings and why like indie publishers create late printings, but Marvel will create a late printing just because. If they believe they can sell it, they'll try it. Doesn't matter if the first print sold out, they will just create a second printing. And they're consistently going to second printing for just about every Immortal Hulk release that comes out. Um, we're seeing store variants for through the 20s every single issue. And these store variants, to be quite honest with you, a lot of them were very lazy. Uh, they were reused art. It wasn't new art, right? It wasn't art that tied into the story. Um, and what you and I have discussed a lot about store variants, how when done right, they can add an absolutely unique collectible to your collection. But when, when they're kind of used as cash grabs, they can actually not add much to the hobby and in some ways hurt it. Um, and we saw that a lot with that, like I said, in the twenties leading up to where we are now with the Mortal Hulk, we saw a lot of, a lot of stores do these like in Hyuk Lee variants. In Hyuk Lee is as hot as can be, right? But it, a few years ago, in 2016 to 2018, on his Deviant Art page, you'll see all these like white background variants where it's um, it's Hulk and Spider Man. It's not a Mortal Hulk. It's it, you know, it's a Hulk versus Spider Man. Spider Man hasn't appeared in this story. He's not part of the story. So it, putting Hulk and Spider Man on your cover doesn't really do anything to help add value to that book that's not what fans want that's not why they've been buying the series the entire time and reusing that art and just kind of like saying well that's a big cover artist and so i'll put them on the cover didn't really work and we saw a number of stores some of your biggest and most well-known store exclusive creators go down this route and it just really didn't work didn't pay off yeah i think the last arc was kind of a little bit down and i think it picked up at the start of this first arc but for me i'm gonna give it at least another i'm gonna read it through this arc and if it doesn't pick up again i'll probably drop it myself but with that being said that's our three up and three down for this week as always let us know in the comments what is your three up what is your three down what did you think of our list what did you like about it what did you not like about it but either way make sure you click that thumbs up button and if you haven't done so already consider subscribing to this channel This is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics, and we'll see you guys in the next video.